prayers in the second rakah. The salah will begin with the regular takbir, followed by three extra takbirs, and then the qira'ah. The second rakah will begin with the qira'ah, followed by three extra takbirs, after which we will complete the remainder salah as normal, and there will be two uh, wajib khutbahs in Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Is everyone lined up in the back? Can, can someone raise the hand? Okay, inshallah. Allahu akbar. Allahu Akram Allahu Akram Allahu Akram Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Deen إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك العالى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى فنيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكرم سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Akram Allahu Akram Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Deen إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين 
قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم واليدين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمي الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا حادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا وقرة أعيننا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد قال الله تعالى واذكر الله في أيام معدودات وقال تعالى في مقام آخر وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج ملة أبيكم إبراهيم هو سماكم المسلمين My dear, respect, my dear respected brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to be able to gather here today in the celebration of two things. Muslims around the world are celebrating two major things. Some of the Muslims have completed this auspicious and amazing ibadah, the hajj. And other Muslims are celebrating the life and the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Looking at this hajj, looking at the significance of this hajj that our brothers and sisters have completed this great act of ibadah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was asked regarding this nusuk, these manasik, what are these? 
What is this? And the Prophet ﷺ, he beautifully replied, Millat Abikum. It is the way of your father, Ibrahim. It is the way of your father. We are celebrating, brothers and sisters, this call that Ibrahim ﷺ made to humanity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that how will people answer that call? Ya'tukum in kulli fajin amik. That the people will come answering that call that Ibrahim made many years ago from every nook and corner from this world coming to celebrate the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was during this farewell hajj of the Prophet that he raised the status and the beauty of our differences. He asked the, the companions alayhi salatu wasalam, he asked the companions, may Allah be pleased with them all. What day is this? What city is this? What place are we in? And they said, this is the day of Arafah. This is the, the place of, 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 of Arafah, which, is, which symbolizes the Hajj. This is the, the day of Arafah. And the Prophet sallallahu said, just as this day is sanctified, just as this city is sanctified, the same way, the respect, the honor, the wealth and the blood of your brothers and sisters is sanctified. It was during this farewell pilgrimage that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eradicated the concept of privilege, that some people feel they're privileged to have something that others aren't having. The, the Quraysh were known that they would not go to Muzdalifah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed they felt that we're Quraysh. We don't go to Muzdalifah. That's who we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, ثُمَّ أَفِيدُ مِنْ حَيْثًا أَفَاضَ nas. That Quraysh, there's no privilege. There's no white privilege. There's no brown privilege. There's no black privilege. There's no Quraysh privilege. No. You are like everybody else. The only privilege you have is the, the privilege of taqwa. Your awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the only way you gain privilege in this dunya. So Allah revealed this verse on Quraysh. Quraysh, you think you have pri privilege? No, you go to Muzdalifah too. Eradicating this concept that some people have privileges that others don't. Right from the beginning, this is what our hajj was beginning with. And if we look at the, 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 the day of Arafah, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gathers all of the companions and gives this, this final message. This is Hajjatul Wida. This is the final farewell of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He stands up before them and he says, listen to this message and let this message echo in the ears of Muslim Americans. Because we need to let this message be heard. He says, Ya ayyuha nas, ala inna rabbakum wahid. O mankind, no, your Lord is one. Your Lord, He's one. Inna rabbakum wahid, wa inna abakum wahid. And the same way your Lord is one, your Father is one. Doesn't matter where you came from. Don't ma doesn't matter which fajin amik you came from. Abakum wahid, your Father is one. La fatna li Arabian ala ajmi. He says, "Okay, now, on this auspicious moment, what is the message that I have for you?" He says, "There's no privilege by your race." La fatna li Arabi ala ajmi. There's no fatna. There's no benefit to being an Arab over an ajmi. Wala fatna li ajmi ala Arabi. And there's no benefit or privilege to being a non-Arab over an Arab. Wala ahmar li aswad. And no privilege for being red or fair-skinned over the uh, aswat. No, all that's done. Tahtaqadamaya. It's under my feet today. This was the message of Arafah. Racism and bigotry is put behind us. This is the message you see when you see everyone coming from every corner. Celebrating the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What if our American countrymen who are not Muslim, could witness the spectacle of Hajj? What if they could see people coming from Russia, from Uzbekistan, on bikes? Min kulli fajr amik from the depths of Africa. 
from as far west as Cali to as far east as China. Coming where? To one place to celebrate one Allah because they have one Father. All the differences put behind them to celebrate the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is for this reason that Malik al-Shabazz, Malcolm X, also known as, he said, and with racism now plaguing in America like an incurable cancer, all thinking Americans should ponder and should be more receptive to Islam because it has already proven and given a solution to the race problem. Allahu Akbar. He's telling us, he's telling you brothers and sisters, that in your heart this deen of Islam has already solved a problem that is plaguing our country today. The problem of racism and bigotry. We have it. Right in our hearts. Would we share this with our fellow countrymen? Will we share it with them and show them what it has? Another thing we need to understand is our diversity strengthens us. The Hajj teaches us that our diversity our strength doesn't come from being one type, speaking one language, having one color, having one type of food. No. Our diversity is what gives us strength. This was the strength of the Sahaba around the Prophet Wasallam. And in this masjid, how many languages do we have? We have the United Nations here. Celebrating the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What can be a greater miracle? Looking at what is plaguing our country at this time. Perhaps we can understand now. As the Prophet ﷺ was saying, Allah inna abakum wahid, Allah inna rabbakum wahid. Listen, your father is one, your Lord is one. There is no benefit to being white, black, or any other thing except if you have taqwa. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed which verse? Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum. Today I have completed your religion. And I have perfected my blessing upon you. And today I am pleased. What is Allah pleased with? He's telling us here. In this final day of Arafah for the Prophet ﷺ, That your deen has been completed. Your way of life has been completed. Brothers and sisters, my greatest fear. My greatest fear is not that outsiders will destroy our religion. Not for others to defame our Prophet. These aren't my fears. My greatest fear isn't even that we may experience hate, speech, and even aggression. These aren't my fears. My greatest fear is that our next generation may lose the value of these great prophetic teachings that have been passed down to them by our beloved forefathers and our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. My greatest fear is that the next generation stops seeing the beauty in every single action of our beloved Prophet ﷺ. Our Sahih narrates that once a man came up to Umar bin Khattab and he said he was a Jew. He said to him, you know, you guys have a verse. You guys have a verse. That if that verse was revealed upon us, that day would be Eid. That day would be Eid. He's saying, you know, you guys are slacking. You have this amazing book. You have these amazing teachings. And you have one verse even. That if that verse was given to us, that'd be an Eid day. So Umar bin Khattab, he says, tell me the verse. And he says, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum. The verse I just recited. That today, Allah says, today I have perfected your deen, your way of life. وَاتْمَمْتُ alaykum ni'mati. And I have completed my favor upon you. And I am pleased with submission as a way of life for you. Islam. Omar bin Khattab, he looked at him and he smiled. And he said, we know the time it was revealed. We know the place it was revealed. We know the exact place the Prophet was standing when it was revealed. That is the Eid, brothers and sisters. Yom al-Arafah. The day after is our Eid. But what is he saying? He's saying, value what you have. Value the teachings of your blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my message to the youth today, to the American Muslim youth, it's a reminder. 
Your deen has been completed, alhamdulillah. Your way of life has been completed. You have been given a path, a beautiful path to follow. You have been blessed with a tradition that will not lead you astray if you hold on to it, if you realize the blessing that it has. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد. Brothers and sisters, I began today's khutbah by saying there are two things that Muslims around the world are celebrating. The first is this glorious, auspicious manner of worship, the Hajj, which is unparalleled around the world. It is unmatched, and we spoke about the significance in the message that that has, which is relevant and contextualized in our American society today about the coming together of different races. The second ibadah, the second thing we are celebrating on Yawm Al-Adha is a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice of none other than our father Abraham. Again, the way of Abraham, the way of Ibrahim. It is incumbent upon Muslim Americans to study the life of Ibrahim. There are lessons in, this, in his life that remain ever relevant to our struggles as minority Americans. It is, it is ever important for us to study his way of life. But what specific thing are we celebrating today? We are celebrating, brothers and sisters, the submission of Ibrahim in spite of him not understanding the order of his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only one that can make this type of sacrifice, the sacrifice that all of us learned in Sunday school, that Ibrahim made, with his blessed son Ismail. The only way the sacrifice can be made is if we look at the Quran and have made it a part of our lives that we read this verse, Kul inna salati unusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Say, inna salati, indeed my prayer, my sacrifice, mahya, my life and my death are lillahi rabbil alameen. The accepted sacrifice of Ibrahim, brothers and sisters, it is upon sacrifice that great nations are built. And it is only according to our ability to sacrifice that we will ever progress. The great African-American icon, Frederick Douglass, he said these words. He says, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crops without plowing the ground. What is this great African-American icon saying to us Muslim Americans many years later that we as a minority community, if we ever want progress, we have to have the spirit of sacrifice embedded in our hearts and passed on to the next generation. A great British historian, he once said, as soon as sacrifice becomes a duty and a necessity, to mankind, I see no limit to the horizon which opens before them. Where is our spirit of sacrifice? This is what we're celebrating today, that we as a community, if we want to move forward, we have to stop worrying about Anna, me, mine, me, mine. But no, the spirit of sacrifice has to be deeply embedded in our children. The next thing of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, brothers and sisters, and I'll conclude. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam unapologetically spoke truth to power. He spoke truth to power. He spoke a, 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 a true word, walaw marwa, even when it was very difficult to say. As American Muslims, we spend a large part of our time explaining to our countrymen what Islam isn't. Islam isn't about war. Islam isn't violent. Islam doesn't oppress women. Islam isn't ISIS. That's not Islam. The fact of the matter is, as long as our energies and efforts are solely focused 
on telling what Islam isn't. We never get the chance to show what Islam is. What is the beauty of Islam? But we have to have the courage and the confidence to understand that Islam has been in America for centuries and it will be here until the Day of Judgment. We have a God-given right to be here. And we have a God-given right to speak and spread the beautiful message that our Prophet Wasallam. So we need the eloquence of Iqbal. We need the strength of Malcolm. And we need the humor and courage of Muhammad Ali to show the beautiful way of our life to our fellow countrymen. Worst of all, brothers and sisters, as I conclude, if we don't speak about the beauty of our deen, if we don't share that with our countrymen, I fear the psychological effects that it will have on our youth who will grow up with an inferiority conflict complex, that they have nothing to offer society. Kalla, bel, no. Islam was always producing people who contributed to the welfare of our society. Texas has seen a horrific and extremely damaging hurricane that has caused damage and trauma to thousands and thousands of lives. We as Muslims, brothers and sisters, in these ayam al tashriq are saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We are reminding ourselves of the greatness of Allah. We have a duty to remind, to help and comfort our statesmen. To help and comfort them. There are thousands of people, brothers and sisters, not celebrating Eid because they have no masjid today. We have a responsibility, brothers and sisters. Our blessings, as the American saying goes, to he whom is given a lot, there is a lot that he owes. We have all been blessed. We need to remind our nation, comfort them, that they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a deep wisdom. And perhaps, perhaps the wisdom was this. Before this hurricane, we were struck with such division because of bigotry and hatred and all of these things that were plaguing our nation. And perhaps these shallow differences were taken away by the deep waters that united people, regardless of their color, regardless of their religion, regardless of their way of life, humanity came together to help one another. Allah knows best, but we have a responsibility to our statesmen, we have a responsibility to our countrymen, we have a responsibility as Muslims to remind people about the greatness of Allah and to help those who are in need. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd, Eid Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And Eid Mubarak to all of you and all your families from ISCC management and ISCC board and ISCC volunteers and staff. Uh, Inshallah, please remember. Uh, in your dua, uh, all the victims of Hurricane Harvey, please help them.